Hi, it's Katrina. Queen Elizabeth I is one of the most famous queens in all of history, but how much do you actually know about her? Here are 10 surprising things you didn't know about Elizabeth I. Number 10. She wasn't supposed to be queen. Elizabeth's father was the infamous King Henry VIII. For those of you who don't know, King Henry VIII had many wives and mistresses, which led to a bit of confusion as to who was going to be on the throne when his time came. However, by the time of his death, he had finally gotten a son in the form of Edward, who despite only being 10 years old at the time, became the king. He would soon die of a fever, which would have left the role of queen to his first daughter Mary, daughter of Henry's first wife Catherine of Aragon, but he had left his cousin Lady Jane Grey as his successor. Catholic Mary didn't respond well to this and deposed Lady Jane to take the throne herself, but this didn't last long either because she died of influenza five years after taking the throne. Protestants in England hated her, and because she didn't have any heirs, nor did she name a successor, Elizabeth would finally become the ruler of England, Wales, and Ireland. It should be noted though that before her rise to the throne, Elizabeth wasn't in the best of places. Supporters of then Queen Mary thought that Elizabeth and her supporters were part of an uprising against Mary called Wyatt's Rebellion. When it was put down, Elizabeth was tried and convicted of being a conspirator. So first, she was a political prisoner of her half-sister and almost sentenced to death before taking the throne. Number 9. She praised her mother in secret. Elizabeth was the daughter of Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn. But before becoming the king's wife, she had become his mistress, and the people of England were not excited about their relationship. Because the king was married to Catherine at the time before he shunned her off to a nunnery, they labeled her the great you-know-what because of her time with King Henry VIII. Upon becoming queen, many noted that Elizabeth didn't talk much about her mother who had been beheaded. Instead, she would only talk about and praise her father. This led many to believe that she was only proud of her father and ashamed of who her mother was. Instead, she was actually rather clever. She understood that the common people didn't love her mother because of her affair with her father, so Elizabeth knew that if she openly praised her, it would open her up to criticism. Instead, she would praise her quietly and showed affection for her memory and her family. For example, when posing for a portrait before she became queen, she wore a pendant that was worn famously by her mother. Then, when she became queen, she honored her mother's family by promoting them to various positions within the court. Finally, she had a pendant around her neck that she wore with a picture of her mother, Anne Boleyn. Number 8. She had her faults. Queen Elizabeth is praised as one of the greatest queens of England, Wales, and Ireland that history has ever seen. She reigned for 44 years, demonstrating not only that she lived for a long time, but also that means that she wasn't overthrown or deposed. She was extremely powerful, and unlike her father and her half-siblings, she was considered a very just ruler throughout her life. She was fair-minded and wanted to keep the country safe and pure like her famous virginal status. For example, she didn't like religious persecution and wanted to end the religious civil war that had seemed to have taken over England during the time of her father and later Mary. She was wise in military and foreign affairs and she never wanted war, but when she openly engaged in it, she won. All that being said, she wasn't a perfect queen because who is? For while she did well to surround herself with people who would help her and guide her, she often made decisions at the very last minute, which wasn't great for planning and many considered it a sign of weakness. While she was quick to silence detractors or show up people who questioned her ability, she was a bit vain. She loved flattery to a fault, and when a portrait was made of her, she would examine it with a fine-tooth comb to make sure it didn't show anything wrong with her. Members of her court and many foreigners knew that she loved flattery. You know how it goes, flattery will get you everywhere. Number 7. She was a virgin for a reason. In the ancient days of kings and queens, monarchs had to marry to secure the bloodline and ensure a true right of succession, which was almost always a problem back then. But with Queen Elizabeth I, things changed. Whether tempered by the acts of her father or just not wanting to give up power to a man, she never married, nor did she ever have a child. Over time, she was called the Virgin Queen, which signified her pure status and love for her country. In fact, there were cults that formed because of her virgin status and praised and revered Elizabeth on a holy level. But what was the true reason for her never getting married or having children? There's a lot of speculation, and there were many suitors who tried to seduce her. A single queen is very attractive. 
One of the biggest reasons that is documented is her love for England. Parliament tried to make her marry, and she bluntly replied, I am already bound unto a husband which is the Kingdom of England. Another big reason for her never marrying was the political side of things. Elizabeth believed that if she married another monarch from another kingdom or country, it might negatively affect England, which she wouldn't have. There have been many other theories as to why she remained pure, including an odd theory that she was actually a man. And marriage would obviously complicate that. Number 6. The Last Tudor The one truly major downside to her not having children or a husband was that Queen Elizabeth I was well and truly the last of her house, the Tudors. This house began with King Henry VII in 1485, and when Queen Elizabeth died in 1603, her entire family line ended. At the very least, one could say that Elizabeth ended the family line on a positive note with her popular and successful reign. Number 5. Queen Elizabeth Loved Sugar A Lot It may seem odd in the world we live in now, but back in the olden days, things like sugar was a commodity that could only be afforded by the rich, such as the Queen of England. And in fact, Queen Elizabeth was a bit notorious in certain circles for her sweet tooth. It wasn't as simple as just loving sweets and sugar. She would literally put sugar on just about everything that she ate or drank. She would put sugar in her salads, in her wine, and she even brushed her teeth with honey, which as many dentists would note is pretty scary. Her love of sweets would backfire in a big way as her teeth would eventually rot out and then either fall out or have to be pulled. With all of her missing teeth, she would then do her best to maintain her image by stuffing cloths in her mouth to make it appear more full. Also, her breath was apparently very rank. Number 4. Multilingual One of the reasons that Queen Elizabeth I was such a great leader was because she understood how to deal with other countries, whether they be allies, foes, or something in between. Her royal court and advisors were also instrumental during these occasions. However, Elizabeth was never afraid to deal with things herself. To that end, she learned many languages so that she could communicate with other dignitaries from other countries. By the end of her reign, she knew how to speak Italian, French, Latin, Greek, Spanish, Flemish, Welsh, and Cornish. Back then, they were all tools in her belt, and she wouldn't have to depend on an intermediary. Also, it was a great way to connect with people. In fact, it was said that she not only knew them, she could speak them as if they were her native language since birth. Number 3. She Cared About the Poor Elizabeth was praised among both the higher class and lower class citizens for her reign. She was tough at times, but also fair, and she definitely knew when her country was struggling with one thing or another. For example, she knew that the lower class people were suffering, and so to help ease their pain, she would help them by giving them food. And not scraps from the table, but food that they could live off of. This might sound like something that a ruler is supposed to do anyway, but back then, it was pretty out of the ordinary. In fact, Elizabeth was so driven that she eventually created legislation that would go into effect in 1601, two years before her death, called the Elizabethan Poor Law, which was basically a poverty relief program. Number 2. It took her hours to get ready Queen Elizabeth loved her appearance, as shown by how she dressed, and how she made sure she looked good in portraits. But when it came to her simply getting ready in the morning or ready for bed, it took a very long time. Back then, a queen had certain ceremonies and such that had to be performed before she could go out in public. By the end of her reign, she was so obsessed with her appearance that it would take hours for her ladies-in-waiting to get her ready. From putting on certain wigs to hide her hair, to putting on many layers of makeup to try and give her a youthful appearance. One problem, though, was that many of the pastes and powders that made up her makeup were actually toxic and damaged her skin, and she refused to use other materials because she truly believed that they worked. Who is going to tell her otherwise? And this speaks nothing of her clothes, which were legendary in their number. She had so many outfits that it could have likely fit a large town, and they were all made with layers and layers of the most expensive materials. Just her gloves apparently numbered around 2,000 pairs. Number 1. She Died of Sadness In Elizabeth's time, medicine could only do so much, and people died of all kinds of things. And of course, kings and queens were no different. For Elizabeth, it is said that her death was more an emotional one, for in the course of a few years, she lost many different friends, family members, and advisors of whom she had a very close connection to. In 1602, it was noted that after several friends died, Elizabeth went into a severe depression, one that left her in a really bad state. After losing another friend in 1603, Catherine Carey, Countess of Nottingham, she fell very sick with influenza. But it wasn't just physically sick. Her sadness and depression took over and she would sit on a cushion for hours on end without moving a muscle, and all attempts to rally her failed. 
and at times she wouldn't even sleep despite advisors trying to get her to. In the end, she died in the wee hours of the morning on March 24, 1603. Thanks for watching! I hope you learned something new about Elizabeth I. Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!